Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. Hi there. I'm Tom, and today we're talking about people, and we're opening the door to the world of art.、Uh, we're talking about a painter here from England by the name of J. M. W. Turner or Joseph Mallard William Turner.、Mm. Uh, this name is not very popular.、Uh, you don't hear this name too often. You often hear about Monet,、uh, Monet, or Van Gogh, Manet, or、yeah. Manet, and、uh, other people like、wow. that,、uh, Cezanne and Picasso. Also, and people like that. But, oh,、uh, actually, Monet. I'm sorry. He's impressionistic, so he's with well, impressionism. This guy's romanticism. I must agree with Tom. I don't know this guy personally. I haven't heard of him, so I'm surprised because I like painting.、So. Well, a friend of mine is really、huh. into this guy, and、uh-huh. he told、oh. me all about、cool. uh, this fella. About ten years ago, and then he moved back to the United States. So I kind of forgot all about this artist. But、uh, today, we're all going to be reminded of a famous artist from England by the name of Joseph Mallard William Turner. And so let's talk about some of his works of art.、Cool. And hopefully, we're doing this article because there is an exhibition going on somewhere of his works. So if you have a chance to check them out, yes, enjoy them very much. Here we go. Let's begin our lesson by reading the entire contents right now. Expressive brushstrokes capture the shifting colors of the sea under a changing sky. Light flickers across the horizon, and makes the water's ripples gleam. This famous painting, titled "Margate from the Sea," is just one of the celebrated works of Joseph Mallard William Turner, known today as one of the greatest Romantic artists in the history of Western art. His works include watercolors, oil paintings, and engravings. All of which are infused with the brilliant and transformative quality of light. Turner was born on April twenty third, seventeen seventy five, in Covent Garden, London, England. In seventeen eighty nine, he was admitted to the Royal Academy Schools, where he studied art. During this period, he supplemented his studies with work experience, painting scenery under artist Thomas Malton, whom Turner claimed to be his real master. In 1794, Turner also attended the evening classes hosted by Dr. Thomas Munro at the Adelphi Buildings, where he copied works by other artists. It was during this period that Turner developed an astonishing command of technique, quickly becoming the most skilled topographical artist of his day. Instead of being typical compositions, Turner's works emphasized the power of nature and established landscape painting as a genre. Not only did these works help define the Romanticism artistic movement, but they also set the stage for later movements, such as Impressionism. In fact, Monet's Impression Sunrise was influenced by Turner's works. Today, Turner's paintings are just as revered. In fact, his piece The Fighting Temeraire was named the greatest painting in the UK in a public vote in 2005, beating works by Van Gogh. Hogarth and David Hockney. Turner was also chosen to be the next face on England's twenty-pound note. For these reasons and more, it's clear this influential artist's works will continue to be an illuminating force in the art world for generations to come. All right, everybody, it's time to get excited because we're going to talk about our famous person today. Cool. J. M. W. Turner,、uh, a famous painter from England. I think he was active、uh, in the early 1800s or so, and he's British, of course. And、uh, of course, a lot of us know about his paintings, but a lot of us don't. So that's why we're talking about him today. We're talking about Turner's *Romance of Light*.、Mm. Uh, yes, indeed, he was in love with light. If you look at his paintings, you can understand that he had a very strong knowledge about light in paintings, how、mm. to make it work effectively. So、uh, let's talk about the first paragraph. Now it says, "Expressive brushstrokes capture the shifting colors of the sea under a changing sky." All right, this is. Describing an actual painting here, we've got some expressive brush strokes.、Uh, brush strokes, of course, are when you move the brush on the surface of the canvas,、mm-hmm. and then it leaves paint behind. And if you look closely, you can probably see where little fibers of the paintbrush、uh, went across the canvas.
canvas and left the paint there.、Yeah. So those are the bits of paint on the canvas that were brushed on there with a paintbrush. And these brush strokes capture the shifting colors of the sea. Shifting means things change. Okay,、uh-huh. to shift means to change from one thing to another, usually in subtle ways.、Uh, like during the day, of course, colors shift.、Mm-hmm. Uh, they look differently in the morning than they do at noon, and they look differently at three o'clock in the afternoon, and they look different, of course, at sunset. The colors shift. Right now, light flickers across the horizon and makes the waters ripples gleam. Ripples are those kind of little small waves in the water. Now, if light flickers, we'll often use this word verb flicker to talk about light, kind of shining unsteadily.、Uh, if you're talking about a candle flame,、uh, if it's flickering, sometimes the flame's really big and sometimes it dies down. So it's not steady light; it's kind of unsteady. Yeah,、so、kind of like neon. Lights sometimes flicker. They do. They go kind of on and off a little bit. The horizon, of course, is that line where the Earth meets the sky. That's the horizon. So he's talking about the horizon. Our author is actually it's she. It's Emily.、Uh, the light、mm. flickers across that horizon and makes the waters ripples gleam. Gleam means to shine brightly. Uh, that's what it means, all right. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have this toothpaste called Gleam、right. toothpaste. I think it doesn't exist anymore. I think it's gone. You, yeah. Yeah. If you brush your teeth,、uh, your your、uh, teeth would、uh, gleam if you use this toothpaste. But <laughs> again, these are ripples that make those circles on the water. And this famous painting titled Margate from the Sea is just one of the celebrated works of Joseph Mallard William Turner. Known today as one of the greatest romantic artists in the history of Western art, so this sentence here tells us who painted this painting. It also tells us the title of the painting. So this famous painting is titled "Margate from the Sea." If you're looking at Margate, I assume Margate is the name of a town or a ship or something、mm. like that, as seen from the sea. It's one of the celebrated works.、Uh, here, "celebrate"、uh, in this particular case means it's famous. Famous, and people, I guess, really enjoy this.、Uh, they think it's one of his、uh, characteristic works, his signature works. If you want to learn about the art of this guy, hey, look at this painting, and you'll get the idea. That's right. So he's pretty celebrated.、Um, actually, he's very celebrated, especially in、uh, the UK.、Um, he's known today as one of the greatest romantic artists in the history of Western art. Romantic here doesn't mean he、uh, he draws a lot of hearts, you know, and lovers and things like that. There are actually、uh, periods of time in our history, and this is one of them. It's the Romantic period, and it relates artists and、um, even. Writers who wrote in a certain style. After the Romantic period came Impressionism, which we're also going to mention in a minute. But the Romantic composers, for example, were people like Bach. So I love the Romantic period. So I need to go back and look at his paintings. I think I'd really enjoy them. But when we talk about Romantic, notice it's capitalized. It's a period of time in history. Uh, it certainly is, and、uh, this one's all about the individual, and also,、uh, well, there are various factors that、uh-huh. uh, talk about this. I think we'd actually make it more confusing for people if you just translate it to Chinese. You'll get the idea. But it's、uh, you know a movement in art and writing, poetry, music,、mm-hmm. and in this case,、Body、art, arts,、yeah. painting, etc. And his works include watercolors, oil paintings, and engravings, all of which are infused with the brilliant and transformative quality. Quality of light. So he worked in many mediums. He did.、Uh, one, of course, is oil painting. That's pretty common. And then we've got watercolors, which、uh, basically you mix the paint with water and put it on the paper. You need the thick paper for that. And engravings.、Uh, those are like prints made from a block. So you like carve your painting into a surface of wood or something like that, and then you use that to make a print of something. That's engraving. Now here it says all of these、uh, types of、um, art that he did: watercolor, oil paintings, engravings. 
All of them are infused with the brilliant and transformative quality of light. Remember, he really、uh, focused on light and how light changes. Now, if you infuse something with something else, it means you fill it with that thing or you put it in.、Uh, for example, when I woke up this morning, I tried to infuse. My voice with happiness as I talk to my dad. So I try to put happiness into my voice. Well, he tries to infuse his、uh, art with brilliant and transformative quality of light. If something's transformative, guys, it means it transforms something. It makes a dramatic change in something. So we're going to be kind of looking at what he did with light. Yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. So light can change over the course of a day. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about his personal history here. Cool. Turner was born on April twenty third, seventeen seventy five, in Covent Garden, London, England. So this would have been. Uh, when the American Revolution was about to start in 1775,、mm-hmm. there the Declaration, of course, was in 1776. But this is going on in London. He was born there, so a few years later, in 1789, he was admitted to the Royal Academy Schools, where he studied art. So he had to have some time there to grow up a little bit. And by the time he was what Lo- looks like he was only 14 years old here, he was admitted to the Royal Academy Schools. That's pretty young to. Be Mm-hmm. Entering a prestigious arts university, he must have been pretty talented as a kid.、Uh, we often talk about really gifted, brilliant type of children, whether it's artistic or intelligence.、Uh, we talk about them as being prodigies, like Mozart was a prodigy. He、mm-hmm. could do things when he was five. Well, here it says during this period when he was going to school, he supplemented his studies with work experience, actually getting out there and. Maybe as an intern, we'd say that today. Oh, I'm interning with someone. He was painting scenery under the artist、uh, Thomas Malton. I don't know him, but、uh, Turner really respected him. He claimed to be his real master. He really enjoyed studying under Thomas Malton. We often talk about how you、uh, study under somebody.、Uh, even today, I studied opera under my teacher Joanne Libby. So you just talk about it that way. I want. Wanted to mention Tom. Yeah. That first sentence has kind of a tricky grammar pattern.、Uh, if you were born in a year, but we say you're born on a day. If the day comes first, guys, you have to say on. Even though with the year we would say in. I was born in 1980. Or I was born on April seventh. So notice that when you have the full date, it's on because the date comes first. And then at would be for the exact time、yeah. I was born at eight o'clock on August first. In August in nineteen seventy five, etc. It's kind of、so、confusing. Sorry about confusing, that. It's confusing, but basically <laughs> all you have to do is memorize it, and you're good to go.、Mm-hmm. And again, we've also got the word supplement、uh, as a verb here. It just means you have this together with some. Something else.、Yep. So you're taking classes during the day, but at other times maybe you're working under an artist or a master or something to get some work experience in order to make some money or something. Because artists, you know, usually have to paint things to make money. True. I、uh, will often use supplement as a noun to talk about vitamins and minerals that we take. Sometimes, if you're not getting enough good nutrition in your diet, you might want to take a supplement,、uh, which is a vitamin pill. So we. Use that as a noun. Here, though, of course, it's a verb to enhance or complete something that you're doing. Okay, right now, though, guys, we should probably take a quick break.、Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天要介绍的这个画家，他的名字叫做 William Turner. 首先来看到第一个空格的句子提到 ，light flickers across the horizon and makes the waters ripples blank one. 他强调的呢，就是他的光影。讲到光线呢，闪过 horizon， 也就是地平线的意思，使得这个水的 ripples， 水的波纹怎么样呢？第一题，我们来看一下 A 选项 suspend 悬挂 ，B plunge 使投入 ，C retrieve 重新得到 ，D gleam 指的是微光、闪光，而在这里搭配它的光影效果。第一题的标准答案，我们就选择 D gleam。
。而这个 William Turner 呢，他的作品非常的呢多元。在第二个空格提到 ，His works include watercolors, oil paintings, and engravings. Blank two are infused with the brilliant and transformative quality of light. 这里提到他的作品呢，包括了水彩、油画，甚至是版画。在后面的句型结构有个 be 动词的片语，所以我们需要一个主词，而前后。都是完整的句子，也需要一个连接词，而可以呢使用 which， 它是有连接词的作用，又可以当做后面动词的主词。所以呢，第二题的标准答案我们就选择 A。Out of which， 刚刚所提到的，不管是水彩画、油画跟版画的这些作品呢，都充满了光线明亮及多变的特质。接着第三个空格提到他的生平。In 1789, he was blank three the Royal Academy schools where he studied art. 在一七八九年，他进入了这个皇家艺术研究院来学习艺术。在英文里面，我们讲到呢，是被允许进入入学，可以搭配 admit 这个动词。所以第三题。就可以选择 A 选项的 admitted to 被允许入学的意思。其他的选项 B distinguished from 区分 C combined with 和什么结合 D rewarded for 为了什么而得到报偿，都不是标准答案。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Let's continue to talk about the life and times and the artwork of Joseph Mallard William Turner, one of the greatest Romantic artists in the history of Western art. Now, Turner again, as we said, was born in 1775. He started studying at the Royal Academy schools in 1789. And he supplemented his studies with some work experience under the artist Thomas Malton, and of course、uh, Turner regarded Malton as his real master.、Mm-hmm. Now, in 1794, about five years after that, Turner also attended the evening classes hosted. By Dr. Thomas Munro at the Adelphi Buildings, and that's where he copied works by other artists. Okay, so this was going on again. He was taking some evening classes, or he attended those classes. I guess he was studying during the day, and at night he went to these evening classes. Sometimes you need to take、mm. evening classes because you're、yeah. working during the day, or something like that. And I don't know what the Adelphi Buildings were or are, but、uh, he copied works by other artists. Uh, which means, I guess, you're trying to make copies of those. But、uh, you know,、right. in the process of copying those works by other artists, you will learn some techniques, and you'll later start to think, "Hey, if I do this a little differently, I could actually make something new and exciting." That's often how young artists learn to paint. They copy other famous paintings, which is interesting because some of them turn into a life of crime and they're criminals and they forge. They're forgers,、oh, no. yeah, and they copy paintings and try to sell them as the real thing. But that's not what he was doing. He was just learning. It says here that he developed an astonishing command of technique. Command here is a noun, and it means the ability to use or control something. And he had a great Command of technique. Your technique is what gives you the ability to do something. Dancers study for years to develop their technique. I was a singer. I practiced for hours and hours to develop my technique. Well, he was learning methods or ways of painting, and he became very good at it. He quickly became the most skilled topographical artist of his day. It's pretty cool. It is、uh, pretty cool. Topographical, I believe, means basically being able to、uh, render the physical features of something to make it look like it's real, real. to make it look like it's a photograph,、yeah. etc. So he was quite skilled. He had some great technique there. And instead of being typical compositions, 
Turner's works emphasized the power of nature and established landscape painting as a genre. Okay, so we've got compositions here.、Mm. A lot of people have trouble with this.、Uh, they've got expensive、uh, cameras and stuff, or they learn some painting skills, but they don't really have strong composition That's skills. That's me. I'm terrible at that.、Uh, okay, well, I guess some people have it, some people don't. But basically, <laughs> it means how you arrange things in your picture to make them look right, the balance, and、uh, how you express、mm-hmm. yourself. And stuff like that. It might be a lot easier than it sounds, but、uh, he didn't just have common everyday compositions. Oh, here's a a little French village, or here's a, an oceanside town in Italy, or something.、Uh, he actually went went one step further and emphasized the power of nature, and actually did some landscape painting.、Uh, he established it as a genre. Landscape here means you're just painting or photographing. The outdoors, mountains, valleys, the ocean,、uh, the ocean coast, and stuff like that.、Uh, the visible features、mm-hmm. of an area, where is、uh, maybe at the time they were emphasizing portraiture or stuff like that, paintings and picture. Usually, we have the two kinds of arts: landscape or portrait.、Uh, you're either painting people or you're painting the outdoors. That's right. So not only did these works help define the Romanticism artistic movement, Romanticism is that movement、uh, we talked about earlier of the arts,、uh, but they also set the stage for later movements such as Impressionism. Now, if you define something, you say what something is. You state exactly the nature of it, the meaning of it. You give meaning to something. And we talked about how Romanticism was an artistic movement. Uh, in literature and arts,、uh, it was in the late 18th century, so the late of the latter part of the 1700s, and it really emphasized inspiration and the individual. So he set the stage or prepared the way for later movements such as impressionism. So if you set the stage for something, you prepare for something that is to come or to follow. Exactly, set the stage. If he had not done this, then we would not have had impressionism. Nobody would know who Claude Monet was, etc., etc. So he helped define this particular artistic movement.、Uh, I did want to say that we actually spend quite a lot of time in this program defining words, telling you what things、yeah. mean. But in this case, it kind of、uh, tells us what Romanticism is all about. And his paintings did that instead of just giving us,、uh, you know, a definition in words. But in any case, yes. In fact, Monet's impression sunrise was influenced by Turner's works. So I just mentioned Claude Monet. He is a famous impressionistic painter, and so he's got a painting entitled Impression Sunrise. He was influenced by Turner. I guess he took a look at some of Turner's works and then、uh-huh. got some ideas、sure. and came up with this wonderful painting. Look this up on Google if you're not、uh, sure what. This painting is now in the last paragraph. It says that today Turner's paintings are just as revered as, for example, Monet, who all of us know that name. We do. In fact, his piece called "The Fighting Temeraire" was named the greatest painting in the UK.、Uh, when they took a public vote, they had all of the citizens、uh, vote for what their favorite painting of all times was, and they actually voted for his painting, "The Fighting Temeraire." You need to look that up just to see what it looks like. This took place in 2005. The vote did, and he beat works by Van Gogh, who is so famous, Hogarth and David Hockney. The last two, I believe. For British, well, you would expect people in the UK to vote for a local boy, so they did.、And、we would I, vote for an American. We would too. People here in Taiwan, of course, would vote、They'd、for, for Taiwanese. Ta- absolutely.、Yeah. So you got to be a patriotic, of course. So this was a public vote back in 2005, and this painting beat out some stuff by Van Gogh or Gough, Fogarth, etc. Turner was also chosen to be the next face on England's 20-pound note.、Uh, England is no longer part of、uh, the EU, but they've always Kept their own money anyway, so of course they use the pound in England. So he'll be on the twenty-pound note, the next one. And for these reasons and more, it's clear this influential artist's works will continue to be an illuminating force in the art world. For generations to come, so it's clear, it's obvious.、Uh, you don't need to be told this.、Uh, he is a very 
Influential artist. If you're influential, it means that you influence other people.、Uh, they see and hear you,、mm-hmm. and they know what you're doing, and they are affected by it, and it helps them come up with ideas. We could say that uh, uh, Turner was influential、mm-hmm. uh, to uh, Monet, for example. Otherwise,、right. he would not have come up with that painting, Impression Sunrise. And of course, he's going to continue to be an illuminating force to illuminate you. Usually means to light something up, right? And now, especially with the internet, we can see paintings by any artist, and I'm sure he's going to influence people for generations to come. Illuminating is also used to、uh, to explain something, to make something clearer. So I think it's interesting they use that word. I think it's a great choice because he was a painter who、uh, specialized with light, specialized in light, I should say. Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher one more time. 接着，我们来看到第四个空格的句子。It was during this period that Turner developed a and blank four command of technique. 也就是在这个期间当中呢 ，Turner 他培养了怎么样的技巧的运用能力？首先呢，我们来看一下第四个 A 选项 ，respective 个别的 B。Astonishing, 令人惊奇的 C, tolerable, 可忍受的 D, fragile, 脆弱的。如果要搭配他绘画的技巧，当然他习得的这样的技巧是令人惊奇的，才有后续这样子伟大的成就。所以搭配文艺跟句型，第四题的标准答案，我们就选择 B, astonishing。第五个空格后面句子提到。Being typical compositions, Turner's works emphasized the power of nature and established landscape painting as a genre. 在这里提到呢，他的作品强调的是自然的力量，而且将风景画建立成为绘画的一种 genre， 一种类型。所以这样比较起来呢，它就不是一般典型的这样子的创作。所以第五题，我们来看一下 A 选项 due to。因为 B as well as 和什么一样 ，C instead of 并非或者是取代 ，D in spite of 尽管虽然，我们从文艺里面可以看出来，强调是自然的力量，然后又创了一个新的类型，所以它就不是这种很典型普通的创作，所以搭配文艺第五题，我们答案就选择 C instead of。第六个空格后面写着。Did these works help define the Romanticism artist movement? Blank six. They also set the stage for later movements such as Impressionism. 在这里很明显的可以看到，我们需要一个连接词，连接前后两句子。前面句子提到这样子的作品呢，那么为这所谓的浪漫主义的这样运动下了一个定义。后面提到，像是后来的印象主义等的运动，也帮他打下了良好的基础。Set the stage for. 第六题 A 选项 No sooner than 解释成为一怎么样就怎么样。B not only but 不仅怎么样，而且怎么样。C either or 两者择一。D neither nor 两者皆非。事实上，他的作品呢，不仅帮忙为浪漫主义的运动下了定义，也为后来的印象主义 （Impressionism） 打好了基础。所以，根据文艺第六题的标准答案，就选择 B 选项。最后一个提到的呢，这所谓的 The Fighting Temeraire 这样子的作品呢，在英国得到了公众投票中被评选最伟大的画作。逗号后面 Blank Seven Works by Van Gogh, Hogarth, and David Hockney， 他的这样作品还打败了像是梵谷、赫加斯跟大卫·霍克尼的作品。所以在这。里的主词是他的画作打败了其他的作品，搭配的就是 beating。所以第七题，我们的标准答案就选择 D 选项。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。
Okay, that brings us to the end of our program for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.